the main waking up the bias practice is should be breathing when you breathe more powerfully and making that sound of the breath audible and you're indicating to yourself that you're waking up and to other people so they don't think you're dead so it's an activity <laughs> And you're breathing powerfully. And you make a bit of a noise in the process. And you can move the body. So the wind says you have to sit like a stone in meditation. Big exhale. And then take the largest breath that you can hold. And hold it. And you breathe out. It's a long, slow, escaping exhale. Now, as you settle into your stillness of your practice, become a little bit more quiet. Deep, smooth breathing every now and then. Noticing in yourself what's changing from the one breath, one practice. And take a large inhale and make the lowest om ah sound that you can. Ah. Sound of breathing. We can put two hands and knees. Puppy dog, soft dog, forehead to the mat. <laughs> to the floor, relax your shoulders, take an easy exhale. Allowing the relaxing body to bend itself. So the practice of moving our back is natural and easy, not back breaking, back relaxing naturally. Coming up to in breath, two straight arms under the shoulders, lift the face up, you put a bit of weight in your arms, you lift the face up, you're moving a bit left, and right, both ways several times, so moving action. Then let the head hang heavy, down, exhale, ah, shake oh. the head out. And then a 
faster, regular loosening. <sighs> Sitting back on the toes. On the kneeling, kneeling position on the toes. Palms open, large breath, big exhale. <sighs> feet forward to cross legs. And we can feel the changes. Now we're also moving the shoulders. Changes brought about by breathing, movements, breathing inhales, big side breath exhales. <sighs> An aggravating but calming and activating practice. Change the direction. Big in, big exhale. <sighs> Shake the arms free with the palms open. Eyes closed, we surfacing into the morning, remaining calm, no longer sleepy, but with the relaxed qualities of waking up and not doing something fast and furious, but conscious, slow, easy. So easy going breath. With an occasional exercise breath. And helps us to be exactly like that. Easy going and occasionally maybe I need to jump somewhere or do something bigger. Big exhale, relax your shoulders, an easy pace indicated by our breath that we choose. We're choosing to be in easy going in our breathing. <coughs> to smaller and smaller, we become a little bit more like we were sleeping just now. Kind of shrink back from doing busy stuff. Lift the crown up and turn down a little bit. Deep in, big exhale. The palms are open. And the Open palms are indicating that we are receiving. We don't have to receive something specific. We're just receiving. Okay, easy breath in, biggest breath, hold the breath. Hold the breath, the deeper breath, so we can make a bit more action with the crown up, maneuver the back and the body so we can hold a deeper breath for a little longer and breathe a bit deeper. Then breathe powerfully through the legs for the long forward. And we're pedal feet, one foot down, other foot toes down. As we do this moving, we also at the same time move the whole body. Large, slow movements, rocking forward and back so you become more supple. And really like an ox pulling a wagon, team of oxes. That work for Scrabble. What? Team o oxes. Team of oxes. <laughs> team of oxen. <laughs> left and right. So we're doing this small but significant movement for a little while. We can close our eyes. So it's a kind of a Kundalini practice. Focus is on the lower back, lower chakras, crowns, up chin is tucked in, so when the spine is upright and relaxed, the Kundalini gets awakened in the lower body can come up. If you're slouching or Tight in the neck or spine somewhere, and the energy doesn't flow because it's a kink in the cable. Arms up next to the head, deep breath, big exhale. So that your 
pulling and pushing, you push the fingers up, but you also pull yourself up into the fingers that pushes up. Now the back is upright, free of tension. So there's no kinks, you're upright. And the energy can rise naturally. So it's a rise and, rise and shine energy, breathing through the nose. You're activating the whole body to breathe properly. So the first and most important, and maybe only real important step in yoga to breathe through the nose. So if we you know, don't become mouth breathers, deep in breath through the nose. And you do breathe with the mouth, it's by choice, breathing with a sigh perhaps. And breathing quietly through the nostrils. And holding the arms up like that, we can uncross the legs, cross them the other way. So we sit not in the same stuck position, because then nothing changes, then nothing changes, and it becomes grown stuck. You're breathing through the nose, quieter, harder breath, more gentle in between. Down, and fingers are resting down, and wrists on knees. You're tuning into your fingers, and you're feeling that the longer fingers, under the influence of gravity, the small weight of each digit helps to pull free every other digit. Big exhale by relaxing the shoulders and not holding them up habitually. Weight of gravity lets the shoulders sink and hang. Likewise, the fingers. And pushing the crown up like we pushed up the fingers just now. So we're in our ideal uprightness, in our ideal world that we're creating our own world. We're creating our body as our world. So we can move and be in certain ways. We choose our thoughts so we can live in a certain way, how do you want to be? Deep in breath, big exhale. What do you want to let go of? You choose what you want to let go of. Subconsciously perhaps choosing what you're holding on to. Also choose consciously what it's to let be, let go. Out-breath and you're pushing the hands down on the knees. So we're holding the out-breath. Put the weight on the arms. Chin tucked in. Neck lengthens. <coughs> Breathing in to sit upright. Big side of the mouth. <coughs> Do that three times and make a difference three times to the whole body. Deep in breath. Then forward exhale. Belly to spine, chin tucked in, out breath, second time. In breath, upright. Gentle exhale. One more, in forward, in breath. Press down on the knees, exhale, become deeply acquainted with your abdominal lift now, shoulders down, back of the neck long, chin tucked in. Inhale. Sitting with the palms open, exhale, feel the change you make to the entire body's physiology. Every cell in the body is now benefiting from the practice. You can acknowledge mentally what the body is already feeling. Take a large breath, big out breath. Change the legs the other way. Pull the shoulders to the back, we slowly relax the shoulders by moving a small, definitely relaxed and loosening movement. Big sigh of the mouth, you're acknowledging mentally that you're <coughs> exhaling all the old breath energy toxicities. 
Big exhale. Acknowledging your massage. Body likes it, loves it. And the rest of the palms open. With a large sigh, we're doing a cliche, loving what we're doing and doing what we love. So that we create and set up that frequency in our own bodies and minds. Which is more about loving every cell in the body, what we do now. Than connecting to anything else. So this is our dominant connection to the cellular of love, if you want to call it that. Deep in breath, hold the body full of the breath. Deep in breath, big smooth exhale. We're doing it again, three times. Deep in breath, deep smooth breath, hold the breath. Breath in every cell, breathe out through the nose. Third one, hold the breath, we'll hold it longer now, in deeper awareness of the consciousness of the breath, in every cell, breathe out, smooth exhale, let the legs go along to the front, we're pointing both feet toes right down, as far as they can go, flex the heels, Relax the feet, hands on the knees with your eyes closed. We're feeling and thinking of energy flowing in the legs. You can drop left and right two or three, four times. So Kundalini doesn't only flow up, it also flows into our legs because Kundalini is energy. It's a life force as the body wakes up to energy. <coughs> it also warms up, tingles to energy. Putting your fingertips on the toes, you're rocking a bit left and right a few times. Slowly let the head hang down, big exhale. Shake the body free, loosen it, relax it, rock it loose. And then from there we come back to hands and knees and soft dog stretch. In the soft dog stretch, you first get the forehead down. Then you push a little harder, and now you're curving the body more there where it's already naturally curving between the shoulder blades. So we're making more room for flexibility. It's also making more space for the diaphragm to breathe. You're also pushing harder down so that you become more flexible. Keep breathing, pushing. Flatten the stomach down on the floor with your arm next to the hips, chin to the right shoulder. And then you turn the head to the other side. Big exhale, relax the whole body against the ground. Large out breath. Turn around onto your back. Put your right foot up to the ceiling once you settle in comfortably so there's no big rush. Bring the chin down, back of the neck long, always the same. So chin up and down, yeah. And then you could rather bend your uh, one uh, leg on the floor if you're struggling with you now. Feel that we're stretching the legs so we can jump, move, hop, skip, and that kind of thing, but also so we can sit more easily. Put the foot to the floor, both legs are long on the ground, relaxing, with the palms open next to your body. The palms open next to your body is very similar to sitting with cross legs in meditation. So, we're reminding ourselves that our yoga practice poses are always about creating the body. 
that you can be more comfortable in, especially in also meditation. Change to the other leg. And you're doing a similar practice, same kind of practice that you did just now. So you put your feet, your legs, everything in the same way. But now you can take the foot to the floor with the palms open and you lie in a relaxed soft body with open palms with the largest exhale. And you allow the body to relax so much that there's no stiffness or tension. It's also a body that's really awakened to the yoga practice. Conscious body, and you're not half asleep. Deepest breath, hold the body full of the breath. And when you breathe out, oh, it's a big exhale. We roll back over onto the belly with your hands, forehands, <laughs> forehead, hands under the forehead. Like this, mm. hands under the forehead, four arms to the floor. Back of the neck long, but because your head is slightly raised, you'll feel the back of the neck also a little shorter, but not crunching the vertebra. Same position, bending the knees, so the feet are resting towards the buttocks, and that increases the back bend, lower back bend. It's a lower back bend stretch. The neck is as long as possible, you're pushing the head towards the crown. Now lift up, put it down, lift both knees and thighs, pushing the head down. Feel that the whole body reacts in order for you to lift the thighs and knees. And you put the thighs down, let the legs lie on the floor. Put your head to the one side, so your ear and the fingers, yeah, change your head to the other side. The mobility of the neck, the whole body reacting because you turned your head, You're not just turning the head of the neck. Head to the middle, chin tucked in. Head in the same place, but hands, thumbs under the shoulders. So that you're doing a plank by tucking the toes under, a plank lying on the ground. You're a plank lying on the ground. Then without lifting, you push harder. And then without lifting the body, you lift the knee. And then without lifting the body, you lift the knees off the floor. So you're now much more like a plank. Only on the chest and the hands. Powerful breathing, keep going and speed up the breathing. And you're speeding up the fire in the body, so it's a strong plank, <coughs> working hard plank, so that you're a hot plank. And the heat that you're feeling always, your metabolic power, your body getting hotter, stronger, warmer. It's as if you're doing a push-up, continuously, but the static one. The energy is active, the dynamic energy flow. Keep going, pump up the breathing. Strong breath energy is active, the dynamic energy flow. Keep going, pump up the breathing. Strong breath now, large strong breath. Up. Fierce thing. Faster little breath. And a big sigh, 
take the arms down next to the hips, turn to the right shoulder, and the legs are floppy. Your body is soft, relaxed, at ease, big side, chin to the right shoulder. And you're breathing with a large side, the body relaxed. So your default setting is conscious breathing through the nose with an occasional breath sigh through the mouth. But your default setting is an unconscious breathing through the mouth or unconsciously without you being aware of it breathing through the mouth. Change your head to the other side. So, quite a big statement, everything that you have trouble with will go away when you start breathing the shoulders totally. Bring the head back to the middle. Put the hands in the same place, but turned around. Turn tucked in. Yeah, forehead to the mat. Arms next to the hips, where we're being now. Hands down next to the hips. Fingers pointing to the heels direction. Chin in the middle, and you lift your forehead about one or two centimeters from the floor. So the chin is tucked in. Back of the neck long. Your head about two, three centimeters off the ground. Something like that. And you lift the head about five centimeters from the floor. So the shoulders are up and your fingers are crawling towards the knees direction. So you have an arch, cobra variation. And you can feel the strength in your core muscles, the lower back. You're pointing to the feet to the back. And your crown is pointing away from the feet. And think of the big toes like the crown. So two crowns at the feet and one crown at the top of your head and the bow action. Deep, powerful breathing. Hold everything the same, but put the hands to a push-up position, the shoulders with the elbows tucked under. Now you can gently lift a little bit higher, just a little bit. And then going to up dog, toes tucked under, to downward facing dog, to walk the feet forward, to sitting with cross legs. From down dog, you're sitting with cross legs. And we immediately close our eyes. Once we're comfortable, sitting upright, chin down, tucked in. With a large exhale, <sighs> relax the head, neck, and shoulders, and the head tilts forward slightly with the chin tucked in. <coughs> and become aware of, of or conscious of breathing through the nose. And breathing through the nose activates the third eye chakra, which is just above the physical eyes. So breathing through the nose, we become more conscious. Breathing in a conscious manner, in a conscious breathing technique. And we start to remember to close the mouth more and breathe more with the nose. It changes who we are as human beings. However, it does allow us to also choose to breathe with a sigh with the mouth. Relax your shoulders. Take it easy, easy, easy out. <coughs> and we can do that several times because we can consciously choose to breathe a relaxing way so that we don't become all stretched out. Become more conscious again by breathing in through the nose. And then move your forward, most forward foot a couple of centimeters forward. And you go to both hands, palms down. When we've breathe, been breathing in a relaxed way, with a sigh of breath, the body is more relaxed and you're not so tight. And we loosen, and when we loosen up, we don't get so tight up. As in we're not uptight. We relax the body by rocking around a bit because no one said you have to sit like a rock. You can rock back of the neck and loosen. So we're not uptight but loosened up. Big sigh. <sighs> Sitting up on the inhale is an upright. Change to the other foot at the front. Deep breath. Crown up, shoulders down. 
Relax your shoulders. You're aiming up higher for the crown. We're leaning forward in the out breath. As we go down, we can move and stretch and loosen so that we're more at ease in the body. We're more rock and roll, more softer, looser, not so stuck in stuck upness. Big <coughs> sigh of the mouth to breathe out our stuck upness. <sighs> just emotions, just suppressed emotions, just stiffness, tension, things we're suppressing and so on. Big exhales. Head down, heavy weight, head. And breathing up to sit up on the inhale. Now we bring the foot in again, the cross legs, palms are open. We're breathing through the nostrils, and you can actually feel for real that the breath moving through the sinus area helps to clear the sinus. So I say that in this yoga class, I said it. 10 years ago and 20 years ago and 30 years ago. It's the most important thing in yoga practice. Breathing through the nostrils. So we become conscious of breath. So we become more conscious in breathing. And it's true of the, our entire life of breathing. With a big sigh of breath through the nose. Same sound as sighing with the mouth. You can also breathe with the chesty sound, sigh through the nose. And you are called J breathing. So you can breathe in with the sigh sound. Out with the sigh sound. And it's just calm and relaxed. Nice side sound, side sound with the mouth. And let the head hang down forward. Move the shoulders in the left, right, or forward, back movement, and the head will go floppy, left, right. Big sigh. Coming up to you. On your Knees with the toes tucked under. Move the body with your head to one side and the other side. Rocking the body on the toes. So uh, rocking left, right, and the toes. The body moves left, right. The whole body becomes loosened. Coming up to fingers interlaced on high knees. Shoulders to the back. And the head hangs down to the front. So the back of the neck is long with the head heavy. It's the weight of the head that loosens up the back of the neck. Feel that you pull one shoulder more, other shoulder more. The head hangs more to the front. So there's more stretch. You want more of everything, not less. There's no reason why you want less of everything. Arms up next to the head, long body, long breath, long awareness of breath through the nose. You can feel the stretch come out of the knees. You're closing the nostril with your thumb, so you're breathing in and out one nostril. One long breath, one nostril through the nose, through the third eye. Both arms up, other one. Arms up, sitting down on kneeling position, but with the hands up. Breathe in and out the nose. So this practice as of yoga, but that thing that you've just done, it helps too. With your eyes closed, making more attent, attentive to. With your eyes closed, making more attent, attentive to. Two, the nostril breath, back of the neck, long chin tucked in, which brings up the sattvic quality. Those who came to class yesterday, talking about the sattva, sattvic quality means sattvic means consciousness quality. 
when we breathe with our mouth, we actually become unconscious in the yoga sense of consciousness. So mouth breathing is a deadly dangerous practice. Deep in breath, you can be dead and alive at the same time breathing through the mouth. That's the living, dying person. And the dead person that isn't alive, unconscious in yoga. Bring the hands down and the out breath. Relax your shoulders with your eyes closed, the jaw relaxed, tip of the tongue behind the front teeth. And in yoga it says when you suffix, be conscious. We may look very still, but we are alive under the surface and not living the consciousness death of the mouth breather, literally. Big exhale. It's a bit of a revelation to us when we start to learn to breathe through the nose changes our being to more subtle, more conscious. Deep in, big exhale. Now we're moving forward onto the hands. Feet to the back. We've prepared the body already for a back bend. So now we can go deeper into the back bend, shoulders down. Looking forward, so not hammering our back, hammering as in overdoing the practice suddenly. Back hammering our back, hammering as in overdoing the practice suddenly. Back of the neck long, you can even let the head hang down to get the exact adjustment. Like you want to be aware of exactly how you breathe with your nostrils and the third eye and so on. You want to know exactly what you do with your vertebra. And your knees, so you can also push the toes back and get the knees so it's comfortable. Okay. Then you can raise the head up a bit and have more power in the upper body. You can also rock the body left and right a few times. Big sigh of the mouth. Then mouth closed. You're not pursing your lips though. It's a soft, not tight lip. Tip of the tongue behind the front teeth. Raise the chin slightly and look up at the ceiling. Ahead of you, way ahead of you. And then find a mark and then look at this spot or something to keep your attention on. Deep breath through both nostrils. Then raise the hips. Keep the hands at the same place. Knees at the same place. If not wanting to bring the knees closer, you go to pose of child with extended arms and the forehead flat on the mat. And relax the arms ahead of you. Forehead down. Now notice that your forehead is on the floor. You're having an experience of thickness, congestion in the forehead. You also have an experience of loosening the second chakra and the first chakra and the lower back. That's the Kundalini region. So uh, the back bend and this stretch helps to awaken the Kundalini flow. And you're coming up on the inhale to hands and knees. Knees a bit wide, hands a bit wide, we're twisting, which will also help to let Kundalini flow up the spine. Deep in breath, big exhale. Top arm is 90 degrees and strong. Both arms under the shoulders, change to the other side. Elbow 90 degrees, head to the side. Deep and powerful breath. Top arm strong. Coming up on the inhale, arms under the shoulders, toes tucked under, and you're sitting on the toe. Now your back is upright. <coughs> We've had the twist, we had the back bend, we had the pose of child. With your eyes closed, think about it. So the Kundalini, we can't see its energy. It means it's translucent, transparent, it flows on up and down inside the body in any case. So I need to get x-ray vision, you can't actually see it. Deep, you can't see it in the x-ray machine either. X-ray machine only sees the bones. Deep in-breath, big exhale. But we see the Kundalini with our energy. So our energy is consciousness. And our consciousness we connect into, subject. 
consciousness, our sense of intelligence, cosmic intelligence, natural body intelligence. Hop the feet forward, long legs to the front, paddling the feet, moving the back, feel how the lower back, second chakra, thigh bones, sit bones, they move, first chakra, hip, so we're activating the kundalini to flow. So we've just been doing this kundalini yoga. Otherwise we fall into unconsciousness. <coughs> we're breathing through the nose, occasionally through the mouth, so we are more conscious with our back, legs. And then crossing the legs, we're going fast sideways. If we go fast enough, we shift our lethargy. When we shift our lethargy, we become more conscious. When we breathe in fresh air, we become more conscious. So it takes a mighty effort, a lot of work, a lot of rocking and rolling. Nobody goes to a party for more than one song, unless it's a crappy party. Unless the music's terrible. See, I had an idea there, the 80s party. What's the next song? <laughs> it's also good, let's stay. songs in the 80s. Ten years worth of songs. Good and bad. Sure, a lot of terrible ones. <laughs> and slowing down. Relax your shoulders by shaking your arms free. And then making fists. So we can lift the sit bones off the ground and the back of the neck long chin tuck in. And then the body relaxed. Big exhale. Shake the hands up. Sitting down, shake the hands up. And then just let the hands rest and you'll now start to feel quite a bit more energy flow inside the body, which means sooner or later, eventually it reaches your hands. So there's some energy flow, but maybe not as much as you prefer. But quite literally, we may have to do what you've just been doing for years before the energy flows so much in the body that it eventually gets to the fingers in a big way. Deep in, big exhale. So we have to do the low nostril breathing before the brain eventually wakes up. Deepest in breath, biggest exhale. Uncross the legs, cross the other arm. Put that in perspective, so whether we believe in reincarnation or not, just the, I believe everything in yoga because I've just seen whatever the yoga says is true. If, if there was yoga as a person and yoga says, then I'd go like, I don't believe other stuff, but I just I just believe that. So yoga says we, have, we need several lifetimes to become conscious because it's so unconscious that if you're doing this, then this can either lead to more consciousness in lifetime, or you're probably doing this because you've been leading up to this consciousness. That's the, the yoga. Specifically, it says, you keep doing this for several year lifetimes, then you become conscious. So you go, okay, so one yoga class will make a difference, but over the lifetimes, yeah, it's like kind of one day, how many million days or something. So we become more and more conscious. So feel as you sit that there is actually like a sliding scale of consciousness. And you can also 
also feel that thing of a bell curve where your consciousness just shoots up. So we can feel we actually become more consciousness on the XY graph when we breathe consciously through the nose. <coughs> so X could be nose and Y could be length of breath or something like that. Deep breath in and out the nose. And then our largest, longest, slowest, most conscious breath. If you know what I mean, because we can talk more about that. And also add the tip of the tongue behind the front teeth if it wasn't automatically there. And then with a big sigh, relax, breathing out the mouth. And then the eyes are open. So I often do this, but it sounds like I'm making fun of people, but I don't mean it in a terrible way. But so as soon as you start being unconscious, we start doing this kind of thing. So if you're like amazed by something, you can be like, yeah. And then when you do that while you're watching a TV program, and you start going like this, you become actually very unconscious. And the, the film completely owns it. That's why if you're watching a movie and somebody says, hey, do you want to think of it? Because you go so, And then you like mesmerized by this. So if you're going to be watching TV like eight hours a day, like that, you become like incredibly unconscious. You like sentence yourself to another like five billion lifetimes. <laughs> Okay, so that's like really like that. So when you see that, you go like, okay, I think I'll go to yoga class. Or you can just park in front of the TV. Use scenario. Sideways. So you're going to have to do a lot of this. Speaking, yeah. <laughs> Depends what, is, what, what the replacement is. Fire. Ancient TV is the best one. Fireplace. <laughs> so it's good to be able to see the concept. Fireplace is better than the digital entertainment, but. Or a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll make you stoned. Karmic action of the washing machine it goes around and around. Maybe it'll mesmerize into entrapment. At the time, we'll also get too mesmerized by it. We'll also have to to escape. Does it also go like... Uh, <laughs> so you got a variety of the spice of love. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that's why cons the conspiracy theories are really true. It's like somebody invented the... from the Matrix invented the TV screen. So the LED invention was by well, Mr. Matrix. And it just like I said, if I get people to stare at this, I can control it. With your eyes closed, it's also true though, because the Mr. Magics can also look at you through the it's a reverse picture. Take a deep in breath, big exhale. Big exhale. Be as it may, the one thing that we can do is be conscious ourselves relatively. And we mostly use the breath through the nose. We can make fun of this world and it's also quite a serious thing at the same time but the one thing that we can do is we can breathe through the nose so it's really the one thing that we can do and you start to notice the body around the back around the spine and the spine is part of being conscious of course you don't want your muscles so uptight at the back that you can't move you know, when they're so weak that the spine has a hard time to sit upright or to move or be. So it means the muscles mustn't be tender, it mustn't be rock hard, because you're not a rock, you're not a tissue or wool or something, but it's like a, actually a 
Agile creature. Agile and you want the right amount of muscle to to be mobile. Which also means you can harden and soften. So breath gives you hardness and softness, breathing and up. Core muscles exhale. At the end of the exhale, hold the core muscles, relax the shoulders. And there you go, breathing through the nose, the body, and the breath and your awareness through the nose and how the body moves with the breath is more or less what you need to require. And then feet wide as the mat, hands wide as the mat, twisting to the right. Think with care and perception, self-awareness. Adjusting ourselves, we go like, where is it tight in my back? Where can I loosen my neck? How can I benefit my knees? Is this helping my breath? Is this helping my spine? Am I becoming more conscious now? In a sense, but also we're becoming more of a state where we can be more conscious. Legs along to the front, your fingertips at the level of the knees, flex the heels gently, lift the one heel, all the height of the, and you don't want to hurt your back, so you've got slightly rounded back, chin tucked in, but you're not like there, it's upright, but not a hollow back. Change, so you need flexibility, strength, when you tune into your muscles, crown up, shoulders down. Can't do this. You must throw away your TV. <laughs> if you don't have a TV to throw away, you mustn't just sit. You must do this. That's your answer. And you point the toes down. Flex the heels. Go like that. Feet to butterfly. Hands to the shins. Lean a bit back. And a few times, leaning a bit back more or more back every time. And the head coming down to under the hands, under the feet. You rock sideways, the head comes down. You shake the body because we want to shake off the heaviness of unconsciousness, which becomes a stiffness, a stuckness, a tightness, a tension. Big exhale. Shake, shake off what you need to let go of. Sitting upright, you sit with cross legs. So that's um, some of you were in the class yesterday. So that such quality is actually consciousness. So it actually becomes deadened when you're not conscious. So if you're just sitting around, for instance, you become more like a potato and less like a human being. Just like that. Is that why when you see really old people, they're often that? Yeah, it's hard breathing syndrome. No, because if you, if you, on the other hand, if you sit and you breathe actively and through the nose, then the body won't change. So the yogis say that if you sit very quietly, but in a state of consciousness, you'll remain preserved. So that's why the yoga practice is that when you, when you sit towards the end of your life, you just sit, and the body becomes very calm and restful. And then some of the yogis they do it as a yogi. <coughs> They stay preserved and their bodies stay warm for three three weeks after they die. And then their nails are still growing. They're looking perfectly like like an embalmment thing. It's interesting because that's also why the church does that, because they preserve you the way you were. And then your soul has time to be. So it's an interesting story. But that subject quality is also a spirit. Okay. So when we bring our hands to prayer to chest, we're also connecting to sattvic quality, which is also spirit. That's why when we eat fruit, it's sattvic quality. So we don't eat too many McDonald's burgers or pies because that's unsattvic. So if you eat enough uh, Mr. Pie pies, then you also become a bit like a potato. Potato pie. Deep in breath, big exit. 
So the breath changes it when we breathe through the nose. And you'll feel you'll be able to sit a bit more upright and relax your shoulders. That's why it's important to eat the right food, but it's also most important to breathe through the nose and breathe in the right way, the correct way. The subtle quality that comes up when we breathe through the nose is very really powerful. And you can say Om to that in our mind. You can say Om to that. Amen. Means yes, so it is. And we can make the Om sound really good. say if you play classical music with plants, they grow nuts, because it's, it's the same argument, it's, it's a vibration. It's all about vibration. High vibrations, right? High vibrations, indeed. Thank you. 